morning. We just arrived here on Redbud Drive. We're on the hilly western side of the city of Redding, and you can see behind me here some of the homes that were lost overnight. I just talked to some of the Cal Fire firefighters who've been out here during that firestorm that swept through the western half of the city. One firefighter, he's been uh, with Cal Fire for 16 years now, tells me he has never seen an incident like they saw last night. Uh, radar, uh, according to the National Weather Service, was picking up a large amount of rotation as heat was rising up from this intense inferno here last night. That was creating fire whirls throughout the incident and throwing embers and flames in all different directions. And that brought the fire right down into the city of Redding. In fact, some areas uh, even toward the heart of Redding were starting to evacuate, including the uh, ABC affiliate TV station. We drove past their station on the way up here. They evacuated and it was right in the heart of the city. And you can understand why as flames came racing down the hillside. But as we drove through that same area this morning, we didn't see any damage in the heart of the city and even on the uh, perimeter as you work your way out. But on the far perimeter, on the far western edge, which is where we are in the hills right above Reading, this is the damage. We can see three homes right here along Redbud Drive burnt to the ground. One of the firefighters I talked to said they rolled in last night about six o'clock and he said they basically backed their truck up, pulled their hoses off as quickly as they could and basically had to draw a line and try to save as many homes as they could. But unfortunately, these three, which are right on the edge of a very steep canyon, didn't have much of a chance as the fire came racing up the slope, not only driven by the terrain coming uphill, but also the winds that drove those flames into this neighborhood here. So right now, the crews making sure that uh, this fire doesn't spread to any of the other homes here. You can see where that engine is parked right there. That is basically where they drew the line. The homes beyond there are okay, but unfortunately, again, these ones that are right on the canyon rim uh, burnt to the ground. And you can see here some of the areas that are still smoldering. We can hear the, the whooping sound of gas lines that are still burning here this morning. And so again, they'll, that's all stuff they'll be taking care of. Uh, you simply can't secure all those utilities this early in the fight. Just have to try to make sure you can protect what is still standing. And that's where they're at right now. The fire right now, uh, over 28,000 acres. Officially, they've reported 15 homes destroyed, although that number is going to go up uh, much higher than that as they get a detailed count by daylight this morning. Obviously, when you're chasing flames, you don't really have time to go back and inventory what was lost. But I can tell you uh, much more than 15 homes were lost uh, than they're officially reporting right now. But they'll get that count a little bit later this morning as we'll uh, get some updated acreage numbers because that report came out right around midnight. And that was still when this fire was racing down the canyon and spreading into the outskirts of Redding. At this point, they have expanded the evacuation orders down the entire west side of the city of Reading and then a little bit further to the north of here They've also started a mandatory evacuation for Shasta City and areas in between there. So this fire continuing to grow. A big concern here for the city of Reading. But for now, that uh, firestorm that we saw last night has laid down. We don't even see the glow of fire other than these little hot spots that are uh, continuing to uh, burn behind us here. But that wall of fire that they saw last night, fortunately for now, has subsided. But temperatures still very warm here this morning. The air very dry. And that could uh, lend itself to, again, intense fire conditions later in the day once things start to heat back up. You know, Live here in Reading, I'm Brian Hickey, KCRA 3 The News. timing on it, Brian, when, when this stuff happens overnight, it just so complicates it for these people who have to get out quickly and for the crews that are going in. Yeah, and especially some of these neighborhoods here, they're just smaller streets that eventually funnel down to some of the larger freeways. But last night, some of the video that we saw posted uh, was just gridlock for folks that were trying to get out of this western area as they saw literally a wall of fire coming down the hillside and uh, that chased everyone out of here. They've got several evacuation centers. We're told some of them have hundreds of people that have uh, taken up shelter there. Others just getting out of town altogether. But uh, again, that big wall of fire we saw last night for now has yeah. laid down. Yeah. All right, Bye. Brian, thank you. So as Brian was saying,